In the next video, I'm going to show you how to scan the ventral shoulder in one sweep and we're going to activate the patient so that you can also see the zone anatomy dynamically. So we're going to place the transducer in short axis plane over the intertubular groove like this. We're going to tilt in order to make the tendon hyperchoic. I'm going to follow the long head of the biceps to distal and we're going to observe for fluid accumulation around the tendon and also for uh, capsular changes due to his tenosynovitis. At this level, you can see the pectoralis major tendon in long axis plane, but the short axis long head of the biceps. And this is a point where the biceps is stabilized by two structures, which is the pectoralis major and also the latissimus dorsi. Well, the pectoralis major has been pointed out. It's in the middle of the screen, hyperchoic. And now if I externally rotate the arm, you can see also deep to the bone coming from the depth, a structure which is the latissimus dorsi. And both latissimus and pectoralis is stabilizing the long head of the biceps. And this uh, uh, insertion we can monitor by looking at the external rotation. We're going to follow the biceps uh, uh, tendon down to distal and at this point what we can see is the junction towards the uh, muscle bellies and now the muscle bellies can be seen beautifully and what I always do is when uh, looking at the biceps muscles especially if a, a long head of the biceps complete tear is suspected I'm going to ask for a contraction of the muscle to see how the muscle volume uh, behaves and also what the echogenicity of the muscle is. Following the biceps back towards proximal, at this level what we're going to do is look at the rotator interval and there uh, we're going to follow the biceps and assess the relationship with the corocohumeral ligament and also the superior glenohumeral ligament also both stabilizing the biceps tendon in the rotator interval. So I'm going to turn the model uh, a little bit and what I will do is I'm going to extend the arm and with this extension uh, I'm going to internally and externally rotate uh, the patient's arm and what we want to see is that the biceps follows the movement of the humeral head and this is what's happening. So this is healthy. In a unstable situation, you will see that the biceps will move in the opposite direction. Okay, so turning the patient back, uh, let's follow the biceps back to the intertubular groove. And now I'm going to uh, look for stability in the intertubular groove by making an in and external rotation. And now we can see that the biceps is uh, within the groove and is not luxating or dislocating uh, during this uh, uh, external rotation, internal rotation movement. So this is also a healthy sign. Then from here on we're going to follow the, um, the, uh, the, the subscapularis tendon. First in 45 degrees of external rotation I'm going to look at the um, insertion to the lesser tubercle. So this insertion looks uh, fully okay and if I'm happy with the insertion then I'm going to externally rotate the arm towards 90 degrees of external rotation. And then I'm going to look at the full tendon from proximal following it to a distal in order to see not only the tendon quality but also the, the quality of the bone, the cortical bone and also the overlying subacromial subdeltoid bursa. This I will do in long axis plane for the subscapularis, that's this one, but also in short axis plane like this. And I'm going to make sure that I will see every bit of the subscapularis as it is a very large structure. Um, I'm going to scan from medial to lateral in order to see all tendon fibers in the end inserting to the lesser tubercle. Last thing I want to show with the subscapularis is following back in longitudinal axis, longitudinal plane, the subscapularis to the coracoid process. And at that level, we are going to search for a subcoracoidal impingement. So we're going to back for internal, external rotation. And now we're going to look for fluid collections that might pop, pop up from underneath the coracoid process. 
and we're going to search for impingement of subscapularis and bursa at the level of the coracoid. So I'm not only going to look at this level from the bone, but also a little bit lower, where we can see now the interaction between subscapularis and coracobrachial uh, muscle right here.